Hello. Almost in every program and while building the solution for any requirement, we might get to a point that we get really frustrated when it comes to choosing. Are we going to go for this instruction with an XIC? XIO. When do these instructions go in series with each other? When do they go in parallel with each other? Now, in order to avoid the confusion and in order not to be as frustrated as this cute girl, let's go together through this video which, in which we are going to simplify when do these instructions go in series, when do they go in parallel. Please keep in mind that in previous videos and examples, we have explained when to choose XICs and XIOs to represent our inputs and outputs in our ladder programs. However, in this video, it's only going to focus and simplify when do these instructions go in series arrangements, when do these instructions go in parallel arrangements. Now, in order to do so, we will be, doing the, we will be explaining this through a simple example. This example states, a motor is to start only if both start 1 and start 2 buttons are pressed. Both of these switches are normally open momentary switches. It will continue running when both switches are released. Finally, anytime stop 1 or stop 2 is pressed, the motor will stop. Both of these stop switches are normally closed momentary switches. As you can see, it's a simple start-stop example. However, it includes two start switches to drive the motor to turn on and it includes two stop switches to turn it off. The reason we need these multiple inputs and multiple outputs is to illustrate the concept of instructions arrangements. Now, when it comes to the uh, actual inputs, normally open momentary switches or normally closed, we need this information in order to decide in our program what instructions are going to represent these inputs and outputs, XICs or XIOs. As I said earlier, we have done so uh, this in multiple examples earlier. However, as you can see, the relationship that exists between these inputs, as you can see, start 1 and start 2, stop 1 or stop 2, we need this piece of information in order to decide how are we going to go uh, in terms of instruction arrangements. Are they going to be in series? Are they going to be in parallel? So let's go ahead and see how to build the rank. In a previous video that you can find the link for on the top, we have described a ladder program as a program that consists of multiple rungs and each one of these rungs act as a bridge between some inputs and an output. So virtually we can dissect each rung into two sections, an input section and an output section. For the input section, we can further dissect it into two main parts, an on, an on part or energized part and an off uh, part. So we can group all the inputs and outputs that are responsible to energize an output all together. And we can group all the inputs and outputs that are responsible to de-energize an output all together. So based on this, this is our rank. It consists of virtually of two main parts, input section and output section. And the input section consists of an on and off section. So, let's look at the program that we are trying to build a solution for. Simplifying things. Start 1 and Start 2 are to start the motor. So, here we have two inputs that are responsible to energize or start a motor. So, this means that these two inputs will be represented by some instructions within the ON section in our program, right? So, are, are, are these instructions going to be in series or parallel? We're going to see in a few minutes. Similarly, for the outputs, I'm sorry, for we have two inputs, stop 1 and stop 2, that are responsible to de-energize an output. In a similar discussion, these inputs will be represented by instructions within the OFF section. Now, are they going to be in series? Are they going to be in parallel? We're going to see this in a few minutes. We're going to start with the instructions that make up our energized section. How, that's why, for the time being, I'm going to ignore the stop section. So, what is the requirement? A motor is to start only if start 1 and start 2 buttons are pressed. Arrangement rule go, goes as follows. Two or more inputs. If we have two or more inputs with an AND relationship to energize an output, this means that we need to place these instructions. Whatever these instructions are, XICs or XIOs, we need to prove, put them in serious arrangement. On the other side, if we have two or more inputs with an OR relationship to energize an output, this means that we need to place these instructions in a parallel arrangement. Now, before we proceed further, 
please keep in mind that these are just the rules. If you are a person who prefers to memorize, this is what you need to memorize. However, it's highly not recommended. In the next few minutes, we are going to actually prove these rules. So, based on these rules, what do we have? If you look at the top, we have start one and start two. So, the relationship that combines these two inputs, start one and start two, to energize an output is an AND relationship. And according to this rule, if we have an AND relationship between an inputs to energize an output, this means that we need to place these instructions in a series arrangement. So, our ON or energized section will look something like this. It, within these squares, we're going to have either XICs or XIOs, but again, choosing XIC or XIO is not within the scope of uh, this video. So, we come to an agreement that our energized section will consist of two instructions that are going to be in series with each other. Okay? So, why series? Start one and start two. Remember the rules that we have mentioned earlier? We are not going to memorize them. We are going to prove them. And in order to do so, I'm going to use some labeling over here, ABC. Again, ABC do not exist in our uh, program. However, I'm just going to represent them over here to help us in illustrating our concept. So, it's mentioned, it's given to us that start one and start two are both normally open momentary switches. So, within the start section, the instruction representing start one will always be false, waiting for a change in the input state for start one. So, what's going to happen once we press start one? Pressing start one, this is going to change the instruction representing start one to true, right? So, does this by itself start the motor? No, because start two is not pressed yet. Does that make sense? It's still false. And because it's still false, we still have a gap in our rank between points B and C that's preventing uh, a logic continuity to go from the beginning of the rank towards motor. And that's why the motor is not energized by only start one being pressed. So let's really start one and look at start two. So right now, pressing start two, it's going to trigger or uh, make true the instruction representing start two in our rank between points B and C. However, what do you see for the motor? Is the motor turned on? The, the answer is no, because start one, as you can see to the left of the screen, is still in the open state, which is which means that it's not true, forming a gap between points A and B in our rank. So, what is the rule? How can we trigger our motor? Only by pressing both start one and start two, as you can see, green color. Uh, circulating the instructions for start one and start two only now we have a logic continuity across the rank all the way from point a to point c and this is going to cause the motor to be energized and that's why we have proven the rule if we have an and relationship between two inputs that are responsible to energize or trigger an output these instructions need to be placed in series with each other otherwise one will be true one will be false right and always there will be a gap uh, in our solution. So let's see right now, why not parallel? So we proved why series. Let's actually prove the other way around, why not parallel? And we're going to do so with the same labeling A, B, A, C, and with the use of two normally open momentary switches for start one and start two. Over here, since we don't have any instructions between B and C, technically we can combine these two or we can simply eliminate uh, the label C. So let's see right now what's going to happen if we press start one. Having start one and start two in parallel arrangement, it's enough to press start one to trigger the motor. Is this what we want? No. Let's see. If we press start two by itself, having parallel arrangement, again the motor is triggered. Is this what we want? No. If you look at the requirement, the requirement states start one and start two only when start one and start two press together that's going to cause the motor to be energized so as you can see earlier we have proved why series and right now we are proving why having a parallel arrangement for such a requirement uh, is a wrong arrangement so right now let's go ahead and move to our de-energize sections right now we're going to look at the instructions that make up our de-energize uh, section and see how are we going to arrange them, series or parallel? So, we have already done 
uh, the energized section start one is going to be in series to the start two right now the requirement sta states a motor is to stop only if stop one or stop two is pressed as we said earlier two inputs they're either going to be in series with each other or in parallel with each other this is the question how are we going to specify series or parallel same as we did before we are going to start with some rules if you are a, a memorized person go ahead be my guest and memorize the rules not recommended we're going to present the rules right now and in the next few minutes we're going to prove them so what does it say if we have two or more inputs with an and relationship to de-energize an output to turn it off it means these instructions need to be placed in a parallel arrangement on the other hand if we have two or more inputs with an or relationship to de-energize an output it means we need to place these instructions in a series arrangement so what do we have in the top if you look at the top of the question mark it says stop one or stop two so if blindly if you are starting this you are still a beginner and uh, you're still making uh, your way into this knowledge it says stop one or stop two stop one or stop two it means we need to go with the series arrangement go ahead and put the instructions representing stop one and stop two in series with each other as we did before we are not going to rely on memory for a beginning that's fine but for later on we need to understand why are we putting them in series with each other so what do we have why series rules remove these rules we're not going to memorize them let's prove them so it's given to us that both stop one and stop two are going to be normally closed momentary switches it's given right and always remember and we have discussed this before always our stop section regardless of the inputs or outputs that are uh, the the off section consists of they will be always true okay they will all be always true allowing our input section to drive our output to turn it on it's only going to remain true until a change in the stop condition uh, happens and that's when the instructions representing them will be changed to false and it will break the rung and turn the, the output off so let's see what's going on over here as long as the normally closed momentary switch is closed everything is good what's going to happen once we press it once it's, it's pressed as you can see the stop one will no longer be true the green color will disappear and this is going to form a gap in our rank and this is going to cause the motor to turn off is this what we want it says stop one or stop two right now i only press stop one as you can see the green color disappeared from the instruction representing stop one and only stop two is still showing green however we have a gap between points a and b and this was enough to turn off the motor let's see what's going to happen if we uh, press stop two pressing stop two false for the instruction representing stop two the green color disappears and this causes the motor to turn off is this what we want so far we have seen stop one by itself was capable of turning off the motor stop two right now by itself was also capable of turning off the motor so that's what we want right now we have proven if we have two or more inputs within all relationship to de-energize an output then they need to be placed in series with each other any change in the state of any one of them is enough to change the instruction to false forming a gap breaking the rung and turning the motor off so right now we have seen uh, why series let's see the other way around why not parallel let's try and put these two stops in parallel with each other and see if we can um, if this is going to provide us with a correct solution so so far our solution looks like this right we are just testing uh, placing the stop uh, inputs in parallel with each other as we have seen before as we have discussed our stop section always has to be true waiting for the change in the input state for that for these uh, stop inputs to form to break the rung and uh, turn off the motor so let's see same labels a b and c and stop one normally closed let's see what's going to happen once you press it pressing stop one this means a change happened in the input state presenting stop one it means between b and c only on the upper level of the rung it's going to be false that's correct however 
Is this enough to turn off the motor? No, because we do have an alternative path between points B and C through the lower part of the rung that's maintaining the output to be on. So as you can see, if you place two, uh, the stop one and stop two in parallel with each other, pressing stop one by itself was not enough to turn off the motor. So let's release this one and try and pressing stop two. So pressing stop two, as you can see, it's going to break the rung on the lower part. However, by itself, it was not enough to turn off the motor because we still have an alternative path between, between points B and C on the upper part. So pressing each one alone was not enough to turn off the motor. The only way if we have a parallel arrangement to turn off the motor is by pressing both of these switches. By pressing both of them, then we were going to have false instructions for the both the top one and the, uh, the lower one. And right now, because we do have two paths between P and C, both paths are broken right now. Only in this case, that's when the motor will be de-energized. However, is this what we want? No. We need stop one or stop two. Any one of them will be capable to do the job, to turn off the motor. If we have them in parallel, this is not the case. We need to press both of them. So, as you can see right now, we have proven the rules. In order to stop, if you have two stops, uh, stop one and stop two, to de-energize de an output with an O relationship, they need to be placed in series with each other. I hope this clarified the concept of instructions arrangements. I'm going to see you uh, in later videos.